Hi everyone, it's your favorite loving and kind widow. Tonight I want to discuss some of the feelings and emotions that widows and widowers um, go through. Now this is anything from the immediate to even uh, seven years later as it is for me. I recently was asked a question uh, actually from a viewer um, to talk about those feelings. I know a lot of my previous videos were about how to, I guess, go about things thereafter. But some people need to know exactly how to accommodate and how to, um, I guess, validate their feelings, those that come immediately after losing a loved one. So here we go. Uh, I wrote a list and before, for every negative, there's a positive. Okay, so I'm gonna go down the list and I will give a a positive to it. And a positive, I'm gonna say this up front, is that it gets better. Um, as you guys know, may know, this year makes seven years for me. And I know a lot of times people look at where I am now and what I'm doing now as success, but it's an ongoing process. It, once you, as an individual and your family members, um, I talk a lot about children because I was a young widow. My husband we were actually planning his 40th birthday and um, he died from his illness. So it, don't put a, get so attached to time when I go through this because you can, some of the feelings that I felt immediately after will go away or subdue themselves and then resurface sometimes two to three years later, depending on some type of event or a lot of times for me, even my husband was an artist. So if I was to see a certain uh, picture or, or painting or something like that, it would trigger, you know, those types of feelings. But the goal and the success part to any and all of this is that, you know, one, it gets better. Two, you find a way to place what death means to you in its proper place. All right. Three, you learn how to bring your joy back. The goal is to become whole again. Um, cause I always say, sometimes I use this analogy as a piece of China, you know, when you crack that, it ain't no putting it back together, but guess what? We're not China, right? We're a, a whole lot more delicate than that. We can't be placed back together and even in better shape sometimes. All right. Since I got that out of the way that somewhat disclaimer of some sorts, um, let's go ahead and tackle it. And one of the behaviors that I have listed first is possessiveness. All right. Now, my thing was when my husband immediately passed away, I was on maternity leave and I did not want anybody in my house. Now, grant you, I was the, I love to mingle. I am a social individual dinners, birthdays, believe me, I was the one, everybody was like, oh, she doing too much. I just love to entertain. It's just something I love to do. And my husband, believe it or not, he loved it too, in the background type situation. In other words, he liked watching me entertain. You get what I'm saying? He loved the energy. So when Chris um, passed away, it was different. I didn't want anybody around me. All I wanted was my children. Um, and once I had delivered my son early um i was forced to kind of come home take care of the house get back down to the hospital because he was he had to be placed in what they call the neonatal icu which they uh the acronym is nicu n-i-c-u so for me it was it felt like two levels of abandonment you know, my husband had left and I had to leave my son at a hospital. Never had to do that before with any of my previous children. So when I did go home, I didn't want anybody around me. And when I say no one, I mean no one. And it unfolded in ways that were very, um, 
I don't know how to say it. Just they want overt. Some of them were. I'm gonna give you an example of a few, but some of them was kind of laid back, like, no, I got it. Uh people would call and say, Hey Nicole, do you need any help? Mm mm, no, I'm good. And see, I had purposed in my mind that if I look good, if I still look the same, then I can make those types of give those type of answers to family members and dear friends who are offering their help and assistance and they would accept it as me being good and then you know they'll be over and done i don't have to worry about them asking me over and over again and it worked uh, i kind of wish that they would have asked a little bit more because i needed the help now back to the possession that part for me it was i want to say probably six months no i don't even think it was that long probably four months after my husband passed away um let's see no it was six months uh this was during my son's uh, fourth birthday my oldest son and so of course i had you know had family over and a family member was like oh wow this is a picture of your you know of my husband do you mind if I take the picture with me and then make a copy and bring it back? And I was like, mm, I'll do it for you. I'll do it for you. I had no clue. And while I was saying all that, I was, you know, motioning the picture out of her hands and placing it back on the uh, shelf. And at that time, I was like, I mean, that it, it meant nothing to me. But when I looked back, I was like, okay, that's one keep going let me just keep thinking about it and um to the person that sent that question thank you for sending that because that request because those feelings are real and it caused me to sit back and just think about okay all those feelings that came with it and these are the ones that came up with and like i said something as simple as mo taking a picture frame of my husband away from somebody all nice and kind like and putting it back on the shelf did not mean anything to me until I actually sat down and thought about those feelings. All right. So, um, of course, I got into this thing of don't touch my husband's things. All right. I had my brother come over and I need I had never did lawn work ever, ever because my husband did it. So it, it came time for me to do it. I did. OK. A lot more. Not that difficult. Right. Yes, it is. Okay, for somebody who's never did, I just thought, you know, they pulled the a little string and then the thing crank up, but you got to pull that thing in a certain way. I just, in other words, it didn't work for me at that time. I'm pretty good at it now, thanks to YouTube. <laughs> but anyway, I remember my brother came by. He was um, in the garage and he said, well, hey, I'm going to get the uh, lawnmower out and do your, I was so upset. Follow me on this, right? Follow me with this. I remember... You know, I was like, oh, okay. I knew what he was there for because I asked him to do this, to, you know, to do the lawn for me. So when I saw him pull it out of the garage, I was like, I got this antsy feeling. Every time I, I, as I think back about it, I was real antsy about it. Like, it was just like my skin was like, something's not right. Like, okay, why is he touching this? So why is he doing this? I don't want him to do this, right? That's exactly what I'm feeling on inside. Before I knew it, I go out here and say, hey, I got it. I can do it. He was like, no, so, he don't say sis. I think he said so, so, however they say it now. He's much younger than me. So, and I was like, no, I got it. I'm good. I'm good. And he was like, I'm already here. Let me cut your grass. I was, and before I know, I was like, no, I got it. Get your hands off his lawnmower. You know, I said my husband's name, of course. And he was like, he was confused, right? Like, you called me over here and I'm here. You know, and by this time, it was probably like early summer, so it wasn't cool. And uh, I said, you know, I was like, yeah, I said, just show me how to do it. Right. And I truly believe some of his spirit was like, OK, she going through something, you know, because he stepped back. He didn't challenge me on it or anything like that. And he showed up. I said, well, I'm pulling it. And, you know, he was like, no. So you got to press this and pull it at the same time, you know, that type of thing. Um. And I want to say the next real um, act of possessiveness toward my husband after he passed away was I, I vividly remember 
my next door neighbor asking me, this was probably about, I don't know, like a little over a year after Chris passed away. Um, I said, he came to me, he was like, well, cause my husband was, he was like, was, my husband was pretty tall. He was like six, five, uh, 280 pounds, you know, really handsome chocolate man. But, um, he asked if he, my neighbor was uh, a volunteer at this, um, uh, men's shelter. So, and he always, my husband, always, if he had any, you know, nice clothes, he, he would always give it to our neighbor. So, uh, my neighbor came to me and he was like, well, you know, how do you feel about if I ask for some of your husband things, you know, go ahead to our, and of course, I was like, yeah, that will be really, really nice. I was so happy about it at first, right? Like, yeah, I can do this good thing, continue this good thing that my husband was doing in a way, you know, we was living. So I came down, I put Chris thing up there when I went into his side of the closet and I started putting his things in the box. I was still kind of happy about it, right? Now, I, I did hold off on his favorite, um, his official uh, Green Bay Packers jersey and I kept the suit that he had on the day that he passed away he had just came home from work so i did keep those items and it's and i kept all of his ties because my husband loved to make his own ties and things like that so i thought that would be something really nice to uh, pass on to my sons you know if they wanted them and i kept his watches too i kept one of each, one of each one for each son so now I'll grant you i've packed these bags up i mean boxes and was ready for the neighbor to come by and my neighbor, he was just going through, you know, in the living room. He was like, these are some really nice clothes. Now, he was like, oh, my goodness. He said, do you mind if I keep a, four, a few of these? I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So as he continued to go through the box, I feel, I had that feeling again. It was like my blood was just itching under my skin. It was like every nerve fiber in my body was like shaking, like, you know, vibrating. I was, and before I know, I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. I remember saying, he was like, like something happened, like, I, I don't know, as if I was having some type of, I don't know what he thought. Cause he looked, he stopped and looked at me so concerned. You can see it in his eye. He's like, you okay? And I was, I'm not, I'm not okay. I thought I was okay, but I'm not okay. And he's, and he called me, he said, Miss Johnson. And he's an old, much older gentleman, old enough to be my father. And he was like, Miss Johnson, I get it. When you're ready, just let me know. And I'll come by and pick him up. And I was like, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I felt so bad because I had come so far and I couldn't do it, right? I couldn't do it. And in hindsight, guess what? That was okay. It was okay. I got all the way to it and I just couldn't do it, right? And so the possessiveness part about it is those things are going to happen because you have an attachment. My husband truck, very nice truck. Um, I've had people ask me to buy it. And I was like, no, mm -mm, no. Are you interested? No, <laughs> I still have it. Um, not that I even drive it. I still, you know, get the license. I mean, the tag renewed every year, pay the insurance on it. I'll drive it just enough. I was told to drive it just enough to make sure it stays in mechanical shape. And that's literally right around, you know, I'll go up and down all the streets of my subdivision and back to the garage. Because in my mind, even still, oh, I let my sons, they'll have it. They'll, they might want it, you know. <laughs> so even still, after seven years, I still have some sense of possessiveness. And that's okay. Okay. long as I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm not... You know, putting on his shirts and going to sleep in them at night, which is something I used to do. So it's okay. All right. Those are real feelings. Um, if it, you know, I always say if anything that makes you feel hurt, where you want to hurt yourself or hurt somebody else, stop. That's not healthy. That actually not only hurts yourself and may hurt somebody else, but it hurts everybody that's involved in your immediate family, especially when you have children. So when you're feeling aggressive or violent, don't ask anybody permissions, permission. You pick up that phone and you call, I don't know what you're looking over. If you, it, in my opinion, it's an emergency. You call 911 and say, hey, this is what's going on. And they can transfer you immediately to the right, brought you to the right um, 
people to help you. Okay. So let me just say that first. So the possessiveness, I get it. I did it a lot more um, prior to getting any therapy. Like I said, I had to get professional help to help me talk and walk through this. All right. Because I had to go back to work. I had a family to take care of, bills, student loans to pay off, you know, well, no car notes, stuff like that. But I had to go back to living. Right? And there was a lot coming toward me in so many different directions for the first time in my life as a single parent. All right. Even as a single um, black woman with children. And I talked about that in, um, in a video, you know, how I felt. So though these are real emotions. OK, now the second one emotion, right, that I want to go over. I don't know how you would coin this, but I just wrote down, you don't miss him more than I do, right? That's number two. Now, the battle of who misses the deceased the most, that is going to happen. Because guess what? Somebody gave, you know, somebody, that individual had a mother, a father, a sibling, or somebody that loved him too. That's not on your bloodline, okay? So, you, I, I, as I thought about it, once again, shout out to that um, the viewer that asked these questions. Um, I remember sitting down, I, um, and we had a, a visitor, a family member, and we went. We were talking. We were first talking about the children, you know, and how they have, you know, been responding to, you know, Chris's, uh, my husband's death, and somehow the conversation shift and they were they went on about it about well yeah I just haven't been able to do this and I haven't been able to do that and I remember telling her and let me oh, you know this is actually um I don't say who it was but <laughs> I was telling her I was like yeah I, I understand because I'm going through the same thing too you know I was sitting in my husband's truck just to gain that same sense sometime and then next thing you know she said, say, yeah, I miss how you would call and ask me about gardening and all that other stuff. And then next thing you know, <laughs> I was like, well, yeah, I miss how. And and as I think back, I was like, what in the world was it? That was really, and even after that, you know, that conversation happened, I felt kind of mm, about it. But looking back, it was us who loved my husband dearly, both of us kind of pitting like uh, -uh I miss him more than you do you don't miss him more than me you know and I remember sitting in a um widow's group and one of the other uh wives um she mentioned the same thing she said her and her mother-in-law were kind of like going back and forth you didn't love him more than I do you didn't come see him when he was sick you didn't come do da 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 I did this and the mother and the um and the, the mother was like, well, I was retired. And she was just, she just went back and forth. And I was like, oh my goodness, that's what I went through, you know? So, like I said, I don't know how to coin this particular one, but maybe it's kind of like, I don't know, them versus you when it comes to the amount of love for the deceased one. When you feel like you're at that point where you have to, defend how much you love your spouse then there's a problem all right there's the other behavior that you want to kind of steer away from all right um because it's not healthy it doesn't help at all when you feel like you have to go tick for tack when it comes to the amount of love that you have for your spouse because um I want to say I read it in the book of the Tao and it's T-A-O, the D, I mean, the T sounds like a D. And one of those, um, I can't remember which number it was, but it's like a book, uh, a ancient books of Chinese, you know, um, I guess you would say wisdom or what have you. I'm in the process of reading it, but anyhow, I kind of digressed a little bit, but back to what I was saying, for the most part, you don't want to go tick for tack when it comes to proving your love for your spouse. A wise person does not have to prove anything. 
And I know it gets you all riled up and you know, like, I did this and you weren't doing that and you did this and when he would do this and da -da -da -da. no, 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 no. You just lay it down and be confident in your love for your spouse and you move on. Don't entertain it when it comes to anybody else. Say, I would suggest say something like this. You know what? I know you loved them because you did this. You choose something that they did together. You say this, you know, you did this. So I know you love my husband. I know my husband loved me or my wife because of this. And then you explain to them their love for you. Not so much your love for them, but to prove to them that your, that's the deceased one, your spouse loved you. All right. So that's kind of like stay away from that tip for tapping. But it was, it was juicy though. It felt good. <laughs> but the after fact was kind of like, mm -hmm. I could have did without that round of tick for tap all right all right three i have outburst of ang anger um you know and one of the things that i hear a lot of in my widow and widow's group i hear a lot of people say um they attack close family members um even i after the fact not so much attack, but I made like I made very clear like I felt like family members could have done a little bit more. And when I say more, just been a little bit more available. All right. Now, people are only going to give what they give. And at the end of the day, we have to accept that as what it is. All right. So family structures differ per person, you know. Um, so I, it's always healthy to say, OK, you they did what they did that may not have been there you know as much as they could have but unfortunately that's all that they gave you accept it for what it is and move on all right um you can uh, ask for more but even after that if they do that's great if they dec you know decline they all i mean decline to do it that's fine to move on okay now outburst of anger and then attacking family members now, be very careful because, like I said, all of these are strong emotions that come immediately after losing a spouse. And the reason that I want to make sure to be very careful because, like I always say, it's going to get better. You know, um, today is eventually going to become yesterday, two days ago, a year ago. All right. So you're always moving forward and you're moving beyond this negative behavior, at least I hope in, um, in, in this process for you, that it does get better. I'm telling you for a fact, it will get better. You keep pushing forward and keep believing in the best in you and all around you. It will get better. Take my word on it. It has, it, it, it does. Um, but you just have to go through certain things, e emotions and people um uh, to get there and believe me like i said it gets better that's why outbursts of anger toward people uh when you feel like you want to say something and you feel like you can't say it in a comfortable or meaningful way and i know what that's like because sometimes i remember you know what oh i just want to tell them something i just want it just i just i just want to tell god god just God, please look that way and cover your ear because I just really wanted to get this person to, I want to say some stuff that I ain't, I haven't said in, in ages, right? But that's not how it works. You know, it, it would have felt really, really good. And I mean, real good at that time. But looking back from where I was to where I am now, that it would have probably destroyed or really made fragile uh, relationships going forward now I do not believe in you um, holding in emotions all right um, if you can't verbalize what you're feeling I always say you know write it down and you know with all this technology record a video and that's something please I just want to quickly stop you know from the topic drift away from just a moment 
make a video, make a YouTube video because I'm doing this because it's therapeutic for me and because everything and every emotion that I've gone through, I said, God, I don't want to go through this and not be able to help someone else get through this and make it a whole lot lighter. I can't take it away, but I can make it a whole lot lighter. And that's my goal. So you do the same thing. Like that you two have like all the, you know, you, you know, videos of people doing things to bring them wholeness. All right. And if you can't do that, you sit down and you talk to someone. If finances are an issue, um, check your local city. A lot of time, uh, a lot of cities have organizations uh, online or, you know, over the phone that you can call and talk to. All right. Remember, get it out. Hey, I think I may need to put this on a T-shirt. Remember what I always say. Pressure will bust a galvanized, you know, those silver galvanized pipes. It will, it, pressure will wreak havoc on us. It will kill us. So get it out. All right. All right. If you have children, your children need you. They need you healthy and whole. All right. So instead of outbursts of anger, one, let's find healthier ways to get the uh, message across clearly and defined. And ways of doing it is write a letter to them. Speaking to someone who is kind of uh, outside of the family, but yet respected by the family. And tell them so they can be a mediator in the conversation. You know that one person that you can go to where if they're on your side and the other person don't like it, that you know you have this uh, issue with, they'll be all right not coming to Thanksgiving dinner. You get what I'm saying? So they don't care if somebody's mad at them. If a family member is mad at them, that type of person. If you don't have one, find one. <laughs> All right. Um, also, writing letters, like I said, speaking to someone, a professional. And they can, because everybody's temperament is different for a lot of reasons. And they can help guide you um, through that. All right. And one other thing, there's a book. It's actually a series. And it comes with a workbook. I told you guys, I was like, and I'm a lot better at it, but this book here called Boundaries, right? It also comes with a workbook, right? I'm studious like that. And it's by Dr. Henry Cloud and Dr. John Townsend. This book will help you build boundaries of all sorts with children, uh, with family members, okay? All right, there you go. I, I, I do a lot of reading. So now on to the next one. I have avoiding family events that remind you of the loved one. All right, guilty. All right, that's me. Uh, for me, I would, especially my husband's side of the family, Christmas um, was really difficult after my husband passed away, even still today. Because um, my husband and I have the only grandchildren, both on his side and my side. So every Christmas, everyone always came to us. In-laws, my siblings, mother and everyone always came to us. So it, Christmas was never the same because I love cooking. My husband, now he was the baker. Oh, my husband made this ginger carrot cake. Mm with like this orange zest uh, cream cheese frost. It was delicious from scratch. I mean, just the grazing of the, the carrots, the ginger, fresh ginger, like he did it from scratch, right? We love things like that, you know? And it was difficult. You know, it got to the point people will say, especially right out there, hey, what are you doing for the kids? Oh, we're not going to do anything. We're cool. We're good. Mm. And it wasn't. It wasn't good, but it got better and it's better now. All right. Um, I would avoid the mainly like his family. I remember um, the children I went and, um, you know, of course, you get condolences from family members who 
uh, weren't able to make it to the funeral. Um, it was just too much. And to see so many like people that resembled my husband, you know, it was like painful. It hurt, you know. But it didn't help because my children deserve to know all of their family and to the best of my ability to give them the life that my husband and I had already began to build for them, okay? So that feeling of avoiding family members is not healthy. None of these are healthy. But I want to say, but there is, it's a real feeling. I remember my I had to tell my sister-in-law once, I remember months after my husband passed away, even though I was see her, I could, it would just, I, didn't, I couldn't look her in the face because she literally looks so much like my husband. She, she's like my husband in a dress, has long, beautiful hair. I mean, she's a beautiful, absolutely beautiful woman. But I, it, right after my husband passed, I couldn't, it just would do something to me. It was just a constant reminder that he's not going to be here. And it hurt. She had did nothing to me. She's the, probably, oh my goodness, an angel, a godsend. But her physical presence, not her spiritual presence now, her physical presence, because I would look at her, I was like, I miss him so much, you know? And I had to tell her that. And I guess it goes back to um, making sure, you know, you don't bottle up your emotions and you find a healthy way of expressing how you feel to somebody else. Because I'm sure my actions, she was probably like, you know, why is she behaving this way toward me? Or And avoiding her or when, you know, I have events you say oh okay I'm, I'm like yeah right and i'm walking off you know and it was nothing that she ever did it was just that her physical presence just so reminded me of someone i miss deeply all right so like i said um all of these possessiveness the battle between who missed the deceased one the most outbursts of anger or you know things like that and avoiding family events and certain family members these are all real emotions they just a few of them i'm gonna run out a list real quick of some that i felt and if you have felt any um that you identify with then in the description in the comment section please just list them and because when you respond to some of these um videos it helps other viewers you know outside of myself like hey okay she's saying it of course she's gonna say it because she has the video no which is not true i do it because i i need this i need you guys as much as you need me but when they hear it from other youtube watchers and i say oh my goodness she's feeling this he's feeling this he knows what i'm talking about you get what I'm it helps validate that feeling of awkwardness, you know, that you go through. Because that's why I, I felt awkward. I felt so unbalanced after Chris passed away, you know. So, it's real and it does get better, 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 better. Now, does it go away? Mm, no. Because every event in our lives, including death, helps propel us forward to something even more beautiful, Okay. All right. So it's a step up. As painful as it is, it is a step up or forward. You can build up on it. And not even just say build, just say that your loved one is helping hold you up or push you forward to do to be your better you, better version of yourself. OK, so I'm just going to quickly run down some of the emotions that I um, I felt. And I have now foggy brain. Oh, my goodness. That went on for years where I felt like. You know, that Charlie Brown, <laughs> whenever he was in class, I don't know how many of you guys remember Charlie Brown, and the teacher would sound like, wah, 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 wah. that's how everybody around me sounded, except for my children. Everybody was, wah, wah, wah. and my whole body just felt numb. I mean, for a long, very long time, all right? And let me venture out for a second. Also, right after my husband passed away, my blood pressure skyrocketed, and I didn't know why. Um... Of course, they always said my weight. I was like, hey, oh, I'm at my best weight ever. I remember I was just being beep roll. And I was like, no, this is not me. And um, I started, like I said, uh, mindful meditation. I started taking serious 
uh, about the things I eat. I have not had any meat um, since December of last year, of 2017. Uh, my goal is to completely cleanse my system. Right now, I'm still eating cheese, though, from time to time. <clears throat> and I am going to conquer that as well. I mean, um, I'm not saying go vegan or anything like that, but my spirit is pulling me towards that direction not to lose weight is totally spiritual and for holiness for myself all right other one another emotion that i went through, i'm gonna run out of list again the foggy brain paranoia i always i thought everybody was out for me oh everybody trying to get a little slice of what of me you know finances me everything right deep sadness the sadness that got so bad when i couldn't shake it all so that's when i had to seek some help confusion oh my goodness foggy brain and confusion them two went hand in hand, at least up until like the third year, when it's everything starts to open up for me. It's like literally the clouds begin to open up for me, right? And that was only my sunshine was, like I said, mindful meditation, reading the word of God, start reading the book of the Tao, um, changed the music that I listened to, make sure my vibration started, um, listen to high vibrational music. Um, I I had I was. I had to be on purpose about regaining my joy. And those are some of the things that brought me joy. All right. So anything healthy that brings you joy, be on purpose about it, be intentional about it and go about it doing that. That that will help. I'm telling you. I didn't find this out. It just happened to me. I was on YouTube and I came across a YouTube channel called You Are Creators by Justin. I also came across Infinite Waters. I'm around Smart. So those are just some. So it just Things be after doing it after years, of course, things start to break up and open up for me and clear up for me. Heartbreak, anger, stress. Whoo, stress. Yes, please, please, please find some balance. Find some time for you, especially for those of you who have children. You, you don't want. I mean, stroke is very real. High blood pressure, hypertension, stress. It can cause you to have a stroke. I think they call like a mini stroke now, a TIA. You don't want that. You don't want that. So if you have to like, I mean, do whatever you need to do. Say, hey, this is my time for me. And when I say time for you, you need to have a plan in place so that you can, you know, rest the soul and spirit and the body and be rejuvenated. Not just going to want to go to sleep. All right. You can do that anytime, but you need to set aside not just time, a few days for yourself once a month. You know, if you can do it more, that's great. But definitely set aside some time for you so that you can rest the body and soul and the mind. And while you're resting it, you're rejuvenating it with positive word. I mean, positive and loving food and fruits, um, music, people. Put yourself around positive and vibrant people. All right. All right. Uh, anything. Oh, one other thing I, I have on here. Suicidal thoughts. I thought about that uh, early after my husband that passed away. I didn't even think it was suicidal. It was more a combination of heartache and sadness that brought on those thoughts. So like, well, you know, if I did something, my children would be all right. They have loving grandparents and aunts and uncles, you know, they're covered, you know, they'll be financially, you know, fine. Those thoughts came through my mind and those are suicidal thoughts. All right. So for me, it was a combination of the deep sadness and the heartache and a little bit of anger that led me to those thoughts. Will you feel that way quickly? quickly and I do mean quickly get some help get rid of that you know because you can get rid of that thought because those combination can't for me created those thoughts all right so that means you need to get somewhere where you can settle those those emotions all right so it doesn't create those thoughts all right remember the mind creates what you want it to create sexual pros promiscuity alcohol fatigue and even drug use you know, um, there's this movie on Netflix. I can't remember the name of it. Oh, I probably shouldn't bring it up if I did. If I didn't know, I'll, if once I find, I'm gonna look it up and I'm gonna put the name up in the description box below. But it was about a lady who um, lost her husband uh, when he went to Iraq after the 9/11 um, attack in New York. 
um, just the pain of her losing her husband for doing something so valid, you know, and 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 I, I mean, and virtuous, it still did not remedy her grief or heartache. So this well-off woman ended up homeless and on drugs, and she met um, another guy. Uh, on the streets and uh, what have you, but you really got to see it because I want to, I always tell you, grief is not one of those fly by type of emotions. That is real. You can put your hands on it. All right. I'm serious. All right. So it can lead you from doing everything from sexual promiscuity, using alcohol to fade out or drown out all those previous emotions. And for some drugs, and the thing is, you don't, when I have fatigue here, you don't want to get too fatigued because then you become prone, defenseless, less the, you know, more defenseless to all these negative emotions. You know, when you're tired, you can't battle stress, anger, confusion, deep sadness, and paranoia, uh, suicidal thoughts, sexual promiscuity. You can't do it. So don't, just try not to get too fatigued. I know it's gonna. It's difficult. It's a new life. Try not to. All right. Build your village. All right. And if don't you feel like nobody's trying to be a part of your village? Guess what? We all have the power of imagination. You sit down. You think about how you want your village to look, and you'll be, you will be surprised at the people that God will send to you. But you got to know that what your village of love and health and wholeness look like. You start using your imagination. All right. And for those of you that read the Bible, guess what? King David, he was a dreamer. He always he said he would sit there while he was, you know, mining sheep, thinking about being king, a great warrior. And guess what happened? He did it. Now, all of us have the ability of using our imagination. Imagine what your village looks like and start daydreaming on it. And believe me, God, or those that believe in the universe or a higher power, however you want to see it, I'm telling you, you put those positive thoughts in your head, that village is going to come to you. All right? All right. So I just wanted to end with something I saw on YouTube. This was amazing. Well, actually, I saw an NP, uh, it was an NPR. It was Jim Lear News Hour. Um, and the lady name was Elizabeth White. Okay, and she also did a TED talk, um, black lady, uh, over 50 and um, highly educated. And she found herself in a situation where she was, she didn't have work. Okay, and I just want to use some of her words of encouragement. I just want to listen to my, her name is Elizabeth White. And one of the things that I mentioned in one of my other videos, when it, uh, my finance video for widows or widowers. I just want to tag this on to it. And this is for finance. She made a statement. She said, small up. One, um, right off, I always say, do not make any major pur purchases. Uh, limit your spending until your mind clears up. Because remember all those emotions that you're going through, you definitely do not want to make any major financial moves or investments, no matter how you may feel about them during this time. All right. So if you have to small up and that means get your bills and your expenses down to where they're manageable. All right. Not where you have to go spend any monies that you may have received uh, because of the due to, you know, the death of your spouse. All right. And also she made this. I mean, oh, my goodness, this makes so much sense. Think strategy, not failure. Now that could be both financial and in a grieving situation, because once you go through all these emotions, right, and you feeling them, you feel like a failure. I know I did. I was like, oh my goodness, I can't believe I'm thinking about suicide. What the heck is wrong with me, right? I'm thinking like I'm losing it. I'm losing my mind. I kind of be. I'm I'm losing this battle, right? But I wasn't. Remember now, those thoughts came probably about. The same year, within a year, my husband passed away. Then it came back again, like a year after, a little, probably like a year and a half after. So I had those thoughts twice. So about five, six years ago, I haven't had them since, right? So 
You're not a failure for having these feelings. You're not a failure for having these emotions. But the strategy is getting the proper help, make sure you're eating the proper foods, making sure that you have time for yourself, make sure you keep that balance and control your atmosphere to your best of your ability. So if you don't have, you have, you know, the funds to go do some elaborate things that you want to do at this, at that moment, because I believe that whatever you thinketh that will is exactly what you'll receive. So bring in that music, turn on your headset. All, everybody pretty much have a cell phone. I don't care if you got one at the corner, you know, my uh, grandmother-in-law calling the Obama phone. I don't care what you got. You can always buy, go to the Dollar Tree or wherever and get you a dollar <laughs> earbud plug it in and you have control of the music that you listen to you have control of what you listen to les brown i've been listening to this man since i was in, i was introduced to him in high school all right you have uh like i said justin from you are creators you have rail smart i mean shoot, i can go on uh i can't think of her name right now but control what you're letting in all right that's the strategy and remember get some help don't wait to the end. Don't wait till your back is up against the wall. Get some help. Help is not, when I say help, get some, talk to somebody. That is not failure. That's optimal strategy. All right? One other thing that she said. Now, this is mainly kind of toward uh, finances for a widow, widow. And she says, fine bridge work. All right? And I'm going to read that. What she said it was, this is what you do in the meantime while you figure out what is next? Letting go of the idea that our net worth is based on our titles. You know, I wrote down exactly what she said, right? And that's true. Uh, for me, I tried working. It didn't work. Rather, my husband passed away because I hadn't fully placed my emotions in its proper place. And also, my children needed help emotional i mean i was gonna call from school I'm like hey you guys ain't never gonna. they were calling me so apologetic it was just i look back it was sweet but it was annoying at the same time i was like we never had any problems so we know that you know her father, so we know she's acting out i mean i had a teacher say i'm gonna call the district and have a counselor come out and she did and eat, ate lunch with my daughter and everything but nonetheless i was needed more at home with my children because at month in and my job in my my field of business I had to balance the we had to balance the whole department down to zero as best we could. So at month in, I could be at work till like eight o'clock at night. From get ranching up from seven thirty or eight o'clock to eight o'clock at night. So I made a conscious decision and I resigned. So I had to go back to what she just said, or what I mentioned first. I had to small up. And I had to think strategy because the strategy was I had to make a way to be there for my children and find some form of help and completion for myself. All right. And in the finance sense, I still had to make some money because if you're constantly taking money out and you're not putting it in, it goes away very quickly. Thank goodness for, um, I did, I tried driving for Uber. Didn't call it work. Then I tried to drive for Lyft. I like that better. And, you know, um, from time to time, I have a friend who have a few ba uh, Airbnbs and I kind of well, I kind of convinced him that it'd be nice for him to hire me to, you know, to clean up between clients. You know what I'm saying? So he was like, not a problem. So bridge work, you have to be creative. And that's why I said, use your imagination. Your imagination will create your reality. OK, you start thinking it, you can do it. All right. Now, with all that said and done, I've given you all of the, not all of some of the emotions that I went through. And once again, shout out to that viewer. Um, this was truly a walk down memory lane. And it was a beautiful walk because the thing is, as I walk back to the present, I know it gets better. All right. Because I'm talking about seven years ago. Remember that seven years ago whether it was two days ago three days ago a month ago a year ago two years ago two and a half years ago i got through it and i have gotten beyond it and i'm better for it my children are better 
all right so you can and you will get through this and get better so please please leave your comments um and your emotions and things like that to validate other widows and widowers and leave words of encouragement because it does take a village and i hope that you feel that i'm a part of your virtual village because i would love for you to do that build your virtual village all right i love you guys it gets better and i will holler at you soon so i always see people say subscribe so Maybe I should start saying that. So please leave a loving and positive message and how are you feeling and some of the things that you guys would like to talk about. All right. So please like and subscribe and I will see you guys later.